Well, for more on finance, we're joined in the studio by Rod North, who's the Executive Director of Bourse Communications. Good morning. Good morning. Why has the IMF uh, revised up its growth forecast? Well, I think it's uh, taken a view that we are seeing some economies around the world improving. I mean, in the case of the US, for example, growth there is looking to be in the sort of 2% plus range. And also, uh, I think uh, overall, you know, the t trend is for economic recovery, although they have tempered that with the fact that there are still things that can happen uh, out of Europe that may come out of left field. So it's sort of good news, bad news. In in one sense. We're not out of the woods, but there are some sort of positive signs. And a revision sort of up to 3.5% is, is quite positive, but it probably puts Australia in a pretty good position too, with our growth rate around the 3.5%, you know, increasing uh, sort of into next year as well. So that's not too bad a sign at all. Also quite positive, certainly if you're a homeowner, were those minutes released by the Reserve Bank yesterday? Yes, I mean, it, it really did show that there is some potential, uh, you know, with what uh, the minutes have revealed about the fact that there was discussion at the board meeting about um, rates uh, potentially uh, going to uh, see uh, a bit of a decline uh, over the next uh, month or, or the month after. So uh, I think the expectation is perhaps there might be a 25% basis uh, decrease uh, next month and I think at the moment the futures markets are sort of showing about a 90% chance of that. Most sort of economists are, are sort of looking at that uh, position as well. I suppose the only thing you've got to sort of temper that with is uh, you know what will the banks do because we, we saw that very interesting uh, move by ANZ Bank late on Friday putting their mortgage rate up six basis points mm. but we certainly haven't heard from from the other three major banks uh, I'm surprised, since. I'm surprised they're waiting so long it's, to it's, follow it's, suit. It's most unusual so we're sort of keeping a very vigilant eye out for mm. that but one of the key things that the Reserve Bank has indicated that it is looking at is obviously inflation data which comes out next Tuesday but one of the things that of course a lot of commentators are also saying now is that it, it shouldn't just be inflation data it's really got to also be employment and a whole range of other factors because I suppose one of the key things that the market is concerned about is employment and, and obviously uh, that area has been quite patchy and we've seen you know the position with Toyota and uh, I mean each uh, day you know we're getting some fairly uh, poor news mm. in respect to that outlook so that should be factored into it as well and I think generally there are um, sort of schools of thought that we will see a couple of uh, decreases in the cash rate uh, over the, the next few months sort of bring it back around the sort of 3 to 3.75 or something like that. That. So take us through what happened on international markets overnight. And international what that means markets were looking uh, very positive overnight. I think off the back of those revised IMF uh, growth figures. I mean, bearing in mind that China, we want to see China continue to stay around the sort of seven and a half percent growth too, because that's going to be a very key uh, determinant for us. But over overseas markets were good. So our lead um, today should be uh, uh, about one percent or, or 50 points up. So it seemed to be quite a good uh, day on the Australian share market after last night's Wall Street performance. Rod North, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. And coming up, we'll be speaking to our Gold Coast reporter for an update on the search for a missing man whose boat sank early this morning. Let's touch base now with the sport headlines. It's good morning again.